As we observed World Suicide Prevention Day, let's raise our awareness level about the warning signs and possible measures to reduce suicide in our society. Here in Jamaica, you may call 888-429-5273, visit chooselifeintl.org, or contact the Mental Health Unit in the Ministry of Health. Let's work together to prevent suicide. This is the Aedes aegypti mosquito that spreads the Zika, Chikungunya, and Dengue viruses. Search for its breeding sites and destroy them. A message from the Ministry of Health. Good day, I'm Lorraine Mendez and this is your JIS News for Monday, September 10. Government has signed a bauxite mining lease with New Day Aluminum Jamaica, which is expected to increase growth in the sector and secure the jobs of over 300 people. As he signed the Novation Agreement last Thursday, Transport and Mining Minister Robert Montague said government would be abandoning the bauxite levy in favor of a profit-sharing scheme where both partners will benefit from any financial recovery in the performance of the mining and refining operations. We believe that this new arrangement will earn the country more in U.S. dollars compared to the traditional levy system. Under the agreement, the government will earn 17 and a third percent earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation or amortization. Minister Montague also gave assurance that steps had been taken to ensure that the cockpit country would not be negatively impacted by mining activities. New Day Aluminum Jamaica Limited is an affiliate of Dada Holdings LLC, which acquired Noranda's stake in the St. Anne Bauxite Limited in 2016. The Jamaican government has partial ownership in the company, which has the capacity to produce up to 5.2 million metric tons of premium-grade bauxite annually. New Day has given a commitment to spend over 35 million US dollars between 2017 and 2021 to improve the Jamaican bauxite industry. Government's new national quality policy, which is being finalized for gazetting by the end of this fiscal year, is expected to significantly improve the services of the island's manufacturing and exporting entities. That's according to the Jamaica National Agency for Accreditation, JANAC, the entity responsible for providing accreditation service to laboratories and inspection bodies. JANAC's CEO, Sharon May Shirley, says the policy will enhance the production, health, consumer and environmental protection, security and quality of businesses. This is a policy that, that's not just for manufacturing and, and, and industries, but it's for, the, for you and I, for the common man in the street. So it enables us to understand why is quality important, how it impacts us as individuals, how it impacts Jamaica, and how it will be the game changer for us as a small developing island state. Janak's CEO was speaking at a recent JIS think tank. The national quality policy will include management systems that conform with the World Trade Organization technical barriers to trade. 169 new constables will be deployed to strengthen the work of the Jamaica Constabulary Force following their graduation on Friday. 40 of the constables will be assigned to the St. Catherine South Division, 25 to Kingston East, and 19 to St. Andrews South. Another 15 will be deployed to St. Andrew North, 14 to St. Andrew Central, and 12 to Kingston Central. Of the remaining 44 constables, one will be stationed at the police academy, while 43 will be assigned to the newly formed Public Safety and Traffic Management Branch. At Friday's Passing Out Parade and Awards Ceremony, National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang urged the graduates to serve with professionalism and integrity. You are accountable first for your own actions. You have control over whether you act ethically or with integrity and serve at the highest level. You are a key part of the mission to restore public order and safety in our country. You will be officers of integrity who will improve families, communities and the country. Two timeout facilities have been established at the Alpha Boys School in Kingston and St. John Bosco Boys Home in Mandeville to help rehabilitate students who exhibit behavioural problems. 
The news was revealed by Chief Education Officer Dr. Grace McLean during a recent function at Jamaica College. She says the timeout facilities will provide psychosocial, psychological and psychiatric support to the children to ensure that they can be fully rehabilitated and rejoin their peers in school. The Chief Education Officer says 12 similar facilities will be opened across the island. The Electoral Commission of Jamaica ECJ has embarked on a series of island-wide workshops to educate stakeholders on the new election campaign financing law and regulations. The law and regulations, which came into effect on March 1, are designed to promote accountability and transparency in the governance of the country. They dictate standards for the financing of election campaigns, set limits on campaign expenditure and donations, and mandate that political parties, candidates and donors declare contributions used to fund election campaigns. Electoral Office of Jamaica staff were among the first engaged in the series of public education workshops. Members of political parties, private sector, civil society, community groups and the public will also be sensitized. And finally, plans are in train to further develop the Gordon Town Square in St. Andrew in time for it to be renamed Miss Lou Square in September 2019. Those plans were disclosed at a function on Friday to unveil a life-size statue of the late cultural icon. The unveiling took place on the 99th anniversary of the birth of Miss Lou. Miss Lou now has a statue to celebrate her. And those who pass by will look up to her for inspiration and encouragement as we continue our efforts to achieve sustainable prosperity for our people. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the bronze statue, which was sculpted by Basil Watson, fits nicely into government's plans to tap into the community tourism potential of the area. Very soon, we will be making Kingston a port of call for cruise shipping. We will be returning cruise ships to Port Royal, and to Victoria Pier, we are working very hard to make Kingston a port of call. And the tourists will want to not just come and see Bob Marley's statue and the Institute of Jamaica and all the other places. They are going to come right here in Garden Town. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Lorraine Mendez. Thank you for watching. Three Miles is one of the country's busiest intersections with 70,000 vehicles passing through the area daily. And it's now experiencing roadwork improvements. Motorists and pedestrians are being asked to follow simple road rules as they traverse the Three Miles area and any other road construction zones in the country. Remember, the prescribed speed limit is 30 kilometers per hour. Adhere to the instructions of the flag persons in these areas. Always look out for posted warning signs. Expect delays. Plan for them by leaving early to reach your destination on time. And finally, slow down and be aware of your environment. The development of the Three Miles Road Network is just another example of our government working to make Jamaica the place of choice. Though we are thankful that predictions for the 2018 Atlantic hurricane season have been lowered, we still have to be on the alert for weather systems that may develop into hurricanes. That's why we have forecasters who use varying tools to predict the weather. Take a look. Hurricane Matthew is still a category four hurricane on the Saffir Simpson scale. It is continuing to move northward, which takes it closer and closer to Jamaican waters. More information is coming out from the Hurricane Center. The Atlantic hurricane season runs from June 1 through to November 30. These dates historically describe the period when most tropical cyclones form in the Atlantic Basin. A number of tools are used, like satellites, radars and computer models, to determine where a hurricane will go and how intense it will be. But a critical part of forecasting is done by the specially equipped NOHA aircrafts called Hurricane Hunters, which collect data through high-flying meteorological stations. That will be transmitted back to the, the Hurricane Center and then made available to all the region, including Jamaica. WC-130J, Hercules, 
is a high-wing medium-range aircraft used in weather reconnaissance missions. This plane is configured to penetrate tropical disturbances and storms, as well as hurricanes and winter storms, and get data on the movement, size, and intensity of these systems. The NOHA Gulfstream model, nicknamed Gonzo, is a high-tech, high-flying, and high-speed twin-engine jet that flies around and over developing tropical cyclones to create a detailed picture of the surrounding upper atmosphere. It has a range of nearly 4,000 nautical miles and a cruising altitude of 45,000 feet. The Lockheed model, nicknamed Kermit, is in a class by itself. Formulated with unique scientific instrumentation, radars and recording systems, the Kermit is able to do horizontal and vertical scans of storms. So we'll have two uh, meteorologists yes. sit up front there. Yes. Uh, the person in the left seat is usually verifying the drops on data that we're uh, collecting. The person on the right is helping with navigation. Uh, the station behind that is where uh, our radar operator sits. So we've got a radar in the nose and a radar in the tail uh, collecting data for us. This is uh, where all of our data systems uh, reside. And then back here is where we're actually dropping the songs. So uh, we'll uh, prepare one of the songs here, mm -hmm. pass it over to that guy. He'll prepare it there just so we have a backup just in mm -hmm. case this yes. computer goes yes. dead or that yeah. computer goes dead. Yes. Uh, once the song is ready to go, close the door. Cutting through the eye wall of a hurricane, lashed by extreme winds, dazzling rain and fierce updrafts and downdrafts before entering the calm of the storm. Probing every wind and pressure change during the course of 8 to 10 hours. So why aren't these aircraft torn apart during these flights? Well, they are generally not destroyed by strong winds while in flight. It's the sheer or sudden change in horizontal or vertical winds that can destroy an aircraft or cause its loss of control. That's why NOHA Hurricane Hunter aircraft don't fly through tornadoes, but they are always monitoring for hot spots of severe weather and shear that they can often identify on radar and avoid if it's too severe. We are always in direct communication with the National Hurricane Center. As soon as they get the information, we speak to them, they tell us what is happening. And so when we are ready to issue a warning, if we feel that we are threatened, we communicate that to the Hurricane Center. We are ready to issue a warning. What do you think? And we take that decision and they make it public to all the countries, not only in the region, but even wider than that through the internet and other means. strike at any time. In the event of one, be prepared to act quickly. If a hurricane watch or warning has been issued, review your home disaster response plan, map out likely routes to evacuate if your home is at risk, and confirm with relatives or friends you plan to stay with. Also, confirm the location of the nearest shelter. Check your emergency supplies and restock if necessary. Remember, Disasters do happen, so be prepared. It's the second week of school. Last week can be viewed as a test run. This week, however, is the real deal. Stay ahead of the curb with this next feature. Breakfast is said to be the most important meal of the day. But how often have we been having breakfast? We've been skipping breakfast morning after morning. Do we really want to pass on this poor health practice to our children? I don't think so. So we've decided to get some help.
The Granville campus of the Hartress NTA's Northwest TVET Institute has offered to render some assistance by giving us some quick and easy meal ideas that's fit for the entire family. Our facilitator today is sous chef Randy Plummer. Thanks for having us, Randy. Hi, Sandra. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Welcome to Granville campus. Today we'll be doing some healthy, nutritious meals just to give parents and caregivers a workable example of what they can do in no time. So before we get into business, Randy, um, why is it so important for us to have a healthy breakfast? Well, it's important to have a healthy breakfast because the body, throughout the night, the body loses all the nutrients that it would have gotten in the day. And what the breakfast does now, it introduces new nutrients to the body, giving the body energy so you can carry out given tasks throughout the day. Also, um, studies have shown where students who have, or children who have healthy breakfast, they tend to concentrate better in school or at their work. Some of us parents can hardly find time to send our children to school on time, much less cook meals in the mornings. What do you recommend? Well, there's a whole lot of easy breakfast ideas. Um, simple thing, just as a boiled egg with some tomatoes, introducing protein along with vitamin C. Another example, oatmeal porridge with raisins. Oats is a good uh, source of fiber. Raisins a good source of vitamin C also. So there are many ways that you can do simple dishes that doesn't take much time. Okay, okay. so with that said, let's get started. Okay. Hey, welcome to our kitchen. Today I have assisting me, Sapphire. We're doing some easy breakfast meal ideas. The meals are so easy to prepare, so you can have your children assist you. Today we'll be preparing uh, mackerel croquettes. The ingredients are mackerel, escalion, mixed vegetables, red onions, and white onions. Also, we'll be using the breading process. The ingredients for the breading process are flour, egg wash, and the breadcrumb. For children who suffer from celiac disease, instead of using our regular breadcrumb, you can use the gluten-free breadcrumb. So what we'll be doing now is basically adding all our ingredients and mixing them together. So first we'll add the sweet potato. And sweet potato is rich in iron and potassium. We'll add the mackerel flakes. So Randy, how long does this meal usually take to prepare? It doesn't take more than five minutes. So what I would suggest to parents who work and have no time to prepare the meals in the morning, prep all ingredients from overnight, pop them in the fridge, and then go ahead and deep fry them in the morning. And that will take the most three minutes. So what I'll have Sapphire doing now is just mixing the ingredients for me. Okay, well done Sapphire. We'll now add some eggs for binding. Just mix the ingredients thoroughly. What we're going to do now is make some mini balls. So just squash everything together. It's almost the size of a golf ball. So we then coat it in flour, then egg wash, then breadcrumb. Sapphire is going to help me make one of the balls. Take up a small amount, squash it together. Squash it. Squash it with your hands like that. Squash it and just gently roll it. Yeah, well done, Sapphire. Okay, and how many of these balls do you usually recommend? Normally for age group 5 to 11, I would recommend 8 ounces. So you're looking at about 4 to 5 of these balls. And portion control is very important because the correct portioning of food alleviates obese children. You have a whole lot of obese children all across the world and overeating is one of the main factors. 
And now we'll move to the fryer. We're going to fry these croquettes until they are golden brown. And this should take no longer than two to three minutes. And the taste is very great. So the mothers and single mothers who have a short period on their hands to prepare breakfast in the morning, this is one of the easier way to go. And it's very nutritious. As you saw, we had a lot of vegetables in there along with the mackerel that is rich in omega-3. You know, omega-3 is good for heart health. It prevents against heart disease. If you are a vegetarian, you can use veggie chunks or veggie mints. Quick and easy to prepare and also nutritious. Don't they look nice? Wow, mm. this is really good. Come on up, help yourself. Mm. Cancer, stress, high blood pressure. Guard yourself against these potentially deadly conditions by eating healthy. Give your body long life with foods such as low-fat milk, dried and fresh peas and beans, unsalted nuts and seeds, fresh vegetables, fruits and coconut water, and eliminate processed seasonings such as seasoning salt, soy sauces and ketchup. When it comes to meats, remember to remove the skin to reduce the intake of fats and oils. Meats should also be baked, steamed, grilled or roasted. Fish is also a preferred protein option. To eat healthy, fill your body with a variety of foods from all the food groups. And remember, eat at a slow pace and in small bites to help aid digestion. This helps to maintain a healthy, balanced and nutritious diet, strengthening your body to ward off illness and prolong life. While we're still on the topic of food, here's one dietary protein that can improve your diet and health. We all love our protein. Chicken, beef, pork. But how often do we eat fish? Is it only at Easter time or when you're at the beach? Incorporating more fish into your diet can be very beneficial to your health. Compared to red meats and poultry, fish has far less calories and cholesterol. It's the saturated fats and the trans fats that our bodies use to make cholesterol. And fish and seafood have very little saturated fat and trans fat. So in truth and in fact, that makes it a very healthy source of protein. Fish also has iron, which is important for good reasoning and memory, iodine, which can prevent mental problems in children, and selenium, vitamins and carotenoids, which are antioxidants. Who knew that we could get so many nutrients from fish? And that's not all. Incorporating fish into our diet can even reduce the chances of developing certain diseases. Studies have in fact shown that people who have a higher intake of fish compared to other meat sources have less heart disease, they suffer from fewer mood disorders, and they have less cognitive decline with age, so less dementia. This is due to omega-3 fatty acids, a nutrient that is only found in a few other food sources, such as walnuts and flax seeds. But oily fish, such as sardines, tuna, mackerel, salmon, and trout, are excellent sources of omega-3s and are readily available at your convenience in supermarkets. So we want to add fish into our diet. In what ways can we do this? So escovitch fish is one of our favorites. Now the onions and the carrots and the vinegar and the pimento, that's all fine. But we don't want to do a lot of deep frying. Deep frying adds calories. Nothing like a nice steamed fish a nice roast fish and when you roast your fish you can stuff it with wonderful vegetables like callaloo and so on so we have to find other ways many of us have broilers as a part of our stove and we've never utilized it we don't know how it's used and that gives us i think the closest taste to fried without adding a lot of oil 
So we've got different styles of cooking the fish, but what about flavor? Jamaicans love adding salt, but fish is already salty. Wouldn't that be too much sodium? If we utilize other things like lime and lemon juice and or fresh seasonings or scotch bonnet pepper or onions or scallion, we can make our fish flavorful without adding a lot of extra sodium. That sounds really tasty, but watch out for bones. Make sure to debone fish before giving your children. Even if the fish is bought deboned, check for fine bones with your fingers. If you're not careful, you could end up with a medical emergency. The recommended serving size per week is only eight to nine ounces of fish, or two to three servings per week. With an array of health benefits and a variety of ways to cook it, don't miss out on this lifestyle choice. Make a positive impact on your health by adding more fish to your diet. Parents, you know your teen children more than anyone else. Yes, they have their ups and downs and can be moody at times, but you know when they are not themselves. They're acting really down, abruptly stopping things they used to love, crying all the time for no apparent reason, behaving reckless, having increasingly frequent violent outbursts, giving away their prized possessions, insomnia, sleeping too much, distancing themselves from friends. These types of behaviors can be caused by depression. They can also be from cyberbullying. But did you know that they could be thinking about killing themselves? We urge you, say something. And if the behaviors persist, do something. Get help. Contact a pastor, guidance counselor, or mental health professional for your child. Follow up if your child received attention. Don't assume he or she's cured. Always be on the lookout for the recurrence of warning signs. Remove all potentially dangerous objects from their reach. And mom and dad, please listen. Let your children unburden themselves to you. And whatever they say, take it seriously. We want our children to live up to their full potential. Let's work together to prevent suicide. As of May 31, whenever you are making local calls, you will have to use the area code 876 before you dial the existing seven-digit numbers in your contact list. This is because Jamaica will be receiving a new area code, 658. Yes, all Little Island will now have two area codes, and to ensure you're calling the right person, you will have to dial 10 digits. Don't worry, if this is new to you, you still have time to get used to it because there is a five-month permissive dialing period where you will be constantly reminded. Ten-digit dialing. Another step in making to make it the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. This is where today's show will ends, but if you haven't already, follow, like, and subscribe to our social media pages, and we'll continue the conversation there. You may also visit jis.gov.jm for up-to-date information on all the major happenings on the island. See you tomorrow, round about the same time. Until then, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thank you for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.